Today we're taking a look at multiple lock setups using the SecureM ProLogic series. This would also apply to ScanLogic series, so both the ProLogic and the ScanLogic can operate up to four locks. We do this using a junction box. This is a junction box we call a uh, CB11, and how this works is it has multiple ports. Uh, it has a port here that we would connect our entry pad to, a second port that we would connect the first lock to, second lock, third lock, and fourth lock. You'll notice that it also has an AC port that uh, we can plug in an AC adapter and now we can power the entire system using AC power and the battery in the entry pad becomes the backup. We're going to use this junction box in order to connect a number of different locks to this uh, ProLogic so you can see how to do it. Any of our locks can be used in a multi-lock system. This is our swing bolt lock and it's usually used on external doors of safes. Um, this is a spring bolt, or sometimes called a slam bolt lock, that can be used in interior compartments. This is what we call a strike bolt lock, and it is um, a little bit different for safe applications, but how we would do this is instead of mounting this lock on the back of the door of the interior compartment, you could mount it on the jam of the door, and then your door would have a pin on the back of it that would engage with this locking mechanism, and that would be controlled by the entry pad also. This is uh, similar to a car door type of application, where you'd slam your car door and the pin would engage here. We're using the same sort of mechanism as a strike bolt uh, in applications for interior compartments. And then if your interior compartment had uh, bolt work, you could always use our dead bolt as well. So depending on the, your bolt work application, you can select any of our locks. So now let me show you how you go ahead and set up a multi-lock system. First, on the entry pad, you need to tell the entry pad how many locks it's going to be handling. In this example, we're going to handle two locks, so the outer door and the inner door. How I would do that is press the menu button, then scroll down until you see system menu and press OK. Now you'd need to enter the super code. Our default super code is six ones. And it's going to allow you access to the system menu. I can now scroll down to see all the, the programming options I have with the, uh, the super code. I'm going to scroll down until I see set number of locks. There it is there, and I press OK. I now have to enter a manufacturer's code. That code is 975246. That allows me, as an OEM, to set the number of locks I'm going to control. I press the up and down button until I get to the number that I want. In this case, I want two, so I press OK. And now the entry pad knows that it is going to control and manage uh, two locks. I could have set that to three or four, but in this case, we're going to do two locks. So let me show you how you begin to connect locks to the system. All right, first, we're going to use the CB11 uh, junction box in order to uh, connect the entry pad to the junction box and then the first lock to the uh, junction box as well. So how we do that is in our normal application, of course, we have the entry pad connected directly to the lock. In this case, we're going to disconnect this and we're going to connect it to the port marked J0. And uh, on the top of the, um, the junction box, you'll see uh, port indications. J0 is the input. So we're going to connect that there. The next thing we're going to do is take another cable and we're going to connect it to J1 and that is the location for the first lock. And what we have to do now is tell this first lock that it is in fact the first lock. So how we do that is we do a mechanical reset. So using the cable that I've connected to the junction box, I would take a paper clip and on the back of the lock find the reset hole. In order to name this first lock, we're going to press the reset button down three times. That just eliminates any power that's in the capacitors inside the lock. Now we're going to press down and hold, and while we've held it down, we're going to connect the lock cable, which is connected to the junction box, to that lock and continue to hold for five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. I can now release. Now, in order to name this lock, I would enter my code and it will ask me which lock I want to open. I'll select lock number one because I've only got one lock connected and it will name this lock as lock number one. So I enter the super code and you'll see it says verify, then it says select lock. I say one. 
and it'll send a signal to this lock so this lock opens. This lock is now named in the memory of this system as lock number one. We can now go ahead and name the second lock that we're going to connect to this. All right, so in order to name this second lock they're going to introduce, this is going to be a slam bolt we're going to put on the interior compartment, we need to do a sim the similar process. So we're going to connect this lock to this entry pad through the junction box, and we're going to use the reset process in order to name it. Now the reset hole can usually be found underneath this little round sticker. Um, it's a QC sticker, and we just want to remove that, and you'll find the reset hole right here. So the first thing we want to do is we want to disconnect lock number one. And this is done so that you don't confuse the system by looking at different things when we're naming it. So we've disconnected lock number one, and now we're going to connect lock number two. We do that by using another cable, plug it into one of the other ports. I usually use the next port. Um, so J2, 3, and 4, but it really doesn't matter. Once you've named it, it doesn't matter which port it's connected to. So, with the cable connected, we now use the reset hole. We press 1, 2, 3, continue to press down and hold, and now we plug in our lock cable that's coming from the junction box. And you can hear with the spring bolt uh, lock, the, the motor actually cycles when you plug it in. Count for five, one, two, three, four, five, and release. Now, we enter our super code. It's going to verify and say, which lock do you want to open? We're going to say lock number two. And lock number two now opens. In opening this lock, it has named this lock lock number two. All right, so now we can connect lock number one and lock number two, and the system will be ready to operate. I'll show you how that works. All right, so I've got uh, lock number one and lock number two connected to a junction box, connected to the, uh, the ProLogic entry pad. I'll just show you how you operate it. So in order to operate this lock, I could enter a user code or a super code or, uh, or a manager code, and I will then select the lock I want to open. So let's uh, enter the manager code. It's verified. It'll ask me which lock I want to open. I'll say lock number one, and lock number one will open. You notice lock number two didn't open. So now I'll show you lock number two. I enter my manager code or user code. It's going to verify and then I select lock number two and lock number two opens. The two locks now know which number they are. The number's been written to the memory and they can operate when called on from the entry pad. There's one other thing I'd like to show you, and that is a typical application where this is lock one on the outer door of the safe, and this is lock two on the inner door. If I wanted to gain access to lock two, uh, in some systems you'd have to open lock one, open the door, and then enter your code again and open lock two. We have a feature, a feature called Enable Sequence that allows us to specify that whenever I select lock number two, lock one opens first so that then I can open lock two. And here's how we do that. Press the menu button, scroll down to system menu and press OK, then enter your super code. We're going to be in the programming menu and we can now scroll down until we see something called enable sequence. And there's enable sequence. So I press OK. And what this now does is it knows that this is lock number one and this is lock number two. So if a user or a manager is asking to open lock number two, it'll first open lock number one and then number two. Let me show you how that works. Enter the manager code. It's going to verify and it's going to say which lock. I'm going to say lock two. It auto opens lock one and now I can open the outer door and then it opens lock two so I can open the, the inner door. The locks then automatically relock. So that's a, a very convenient feature for an interior compartment applications where you have an outer door and an inner door and you don't have to go through two operations in order to open the first lock then open the second lock and that's called enable sequence. 
There's also another function in here that allows you to authorize which users you can uh, specify uh, who will be able to open lock one or lock two. And that's called authorize locks. Check the video on authorize locks to see how to do that programming. That's how you set up a multiple lock system using a ProLogic entry pad or a ScanLogic entry pad.